Hello there, and welcome back to another Redgate Solution Engineer video. My name is Chris Unwin, and I am a Solution Engineer for Redgate Software right here in Cambridge in the United Kingdom. Now today, I'm going to show you how we can include Redgate SQL Data Catalog as part of our DevOps process, as part of the upstream delivery of database changes to our integration, testing, staging, and ultimately production environments. Now, why would we do this? It makes logical sense for us to use classifications to get our production databases classified so that we understand where all of our sensitive information exists. And we can use that, as you have seen from previous videos, we can use that to integrate with Data Masker for SQL Server and Redgate SQL Clone, enabling us to bring back classified, sanitized copies of our production environment for development. That makes logical sense. So why would we also include it in the upstream process where we deploy to production? Well, nothing is more changeable than the structured data world of the database. We're constantly changing tables, adding columns, changing the purpose of certain columns, splitting tables. Things like this happen all the time. It is par for the course in the structured data world. So one of the hardest things to do once you've gotten a database environment classified is actually to stay on top of that classification. Now, many pieces of data protection legislation globally would have you believe that the best way to achieve true data compliance and to protect data is good technical and organizational measures. So, as part of the development process, as part of the deployment process, classification and the protection of data should just form part of our standard governance as for part of our standard process and not simply just form new red tape for our developers. What this means is that if there's a way to build it in automatically such that we keep our classifications up to date in upstream environments, then we always know the state of our upstream environments, of our production environments, where sensitive information exists, how much sensitive information, and therefore how much risk is associated with any given database or system. Today, I will be working with the voice of the DBA database. I've got a couple of those here on an instance, purely to show you through this demonstration. Of course, they would exist on different uh, instances in the real world. But what I've gone ahead and done is fully classified my voice of the DBA production database. And then using the SQL Data Catalog PowerShell module, I have persisted those classifications down to other copies of the voice of the DBA database, in this case, our testing database. Then what I have done is I've made a change to my voice of the DBA dev database and using Azure DevOps and Redgate SQL Change Automation, I've built out a pipeline that will deploy upstream to integration, testing, and production. Now, I've gone as far as the testing environment so far. Uh, if we take a look at our database deployment resources, you'll see that we've got some resources here where we can view the reports. We've got our changes.html file, and you'll see the changes that I've made are number one. I've added a new rating column to the articles table. And change number two, again, as a developer, I've added a new MySpace column to the contacts table. So these changes are absolutely going to require us to give those columns a classification when moving up into production. It's not enough for our catalog to start getting out of date the second we deploy to it, that we deploy to production. So what we have built out as a result, if we take a look in our testing environment where I have now deployed to testing, you can see that SQL Data Catalog has picked up that I have now some unspecified columns in the voice of the DBA testing. I've just deployed to voice of the DBA testing. 
Everything else is classified, but we have those two new columns on testing that we would expect at this point to now classify. This is a stage that would be associated with the upstream process. We make our changes in dev, we approve them, we test them, we commit them, we pre-build them on the pull request, merge them in, everything's good, it goes to integration, final integration tests, and then we promote it to our testing environment. What happens now? Well, because it's made it this far, it has to get to production. We've done all of our testing on the left-hand side. Now it is just one-click deployments up through our relevant environments. Now, at this point, I would expect to come into the voice of the DBA testing to find those columns with no tags and to make an informed decision over whether or not they are sensitive. The rating of an article is definitely not, in my opinion, a sensitive field, so I could descope that. The MySpace handle column on the contacts table, because we're so relevant and up to date, that is definitely going to be sensitive information and should have a tag associated with it. Now, instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and promote these changes to production without doing the classification. I can confidently do this because I have modified my upstream process so that I'm going to create the release artifacts. I'm then going to have a manual intervention step where I approve the deployment to production. And then I have an additional agent phase down here that does the deployment to production, but also has two PowerShell stages just before. This is leveraging data catalogs PowerShell API, meaning that we can pull in the PowerShell module during the release process to first check catalog for any unclassified columns. I've hard coded in just these variables uh, during setup. So my auth token for data catalog, where my catalog server is, the name of the database we're checking, etc. And if we uh, if we go to this uh, to the end of this, you can see that we have an exit one at the end of the script. Now, on point one, I could pass in Azure DevOps environment variables, which would allow us to dynamically change which environment we are checking. I am checking the voice of the DBA testing environment, and what that's going to do is make sure that we have classified everything prior to deployment. If we haven't done that, this exit one is going to cause the PowerShell to exit with an error code, which will cause the deployment to actually stop. It will prevent the deployment from being carried out. If, however, we have classified everything, it will inform us that there are no columns pending classification. It will proceed to deploy the database changes. And if the deployment is successful, it will then copy up our classifications from our previous environment, from testing to our production environment. So they are now back in sync. If I try to promote now to our production environment, what we should hopefully see is that it will build those uh, release artifacts we look at the logs, it will download the artifact, it's going to create the release artifact. If done successfully, I will then approve that. And once we approve it, it will then kick off our catalog checks. Now, because I haven't classified those two columns in voice of the DBA testing, what we expect is for this to error out to prevent the deployment from proceeding. And that's exactly what we would expect. So let's get that approved now. Manual intervention stage, resume. There we go. I already know what's in the changes.html file, so I don't need to worry about that. And what we should now find is that, there we go. PowerShell has exited with error code one. You have two columns, there we go, 
bit closer. You have two columns on Win 2016 Voice of the DBA testing pending classification. Please do so before promoting the deployment. And that is our articles rating column and our contacts MySpace column. Now, what we're going to do, as we can see, our pipeline, our production uh, deployment failed. If I now come into data catalog and do the due diligence I was supposed to do in the first place as part of this deployment, I can very easily highlight with no tags. I'm going to classify my articles rating column as internal, out of scope, system. I'm then going to classify my contacts MySpace table with uh, confidential classification scope in scope, apply changes. We now have no columns without a classification. If we come back to Win 2016, there we are, everything has been classified. Let's now try to rerun this deployment. Redeploy. Now that is in progress. It's going to recreate the deployment artifact and then it's going to allow me to approve this and move my changes upstream. Once this moves upstream, this will then appear in the voice of the DBA production. However, we won't need to classify it because we already did so in the voice of the DBA testing. And if we look at the release stage, you'll notice that after we've successfully deployed, in the copy classifications up to prod PowerShell, you can see that we first check that the database is up to date. So we find those two new columns and then we copy the classification up from testing to prod. Very straightforward. Now, if we come back, hopefully we can resume that deployment. There we go. The agent phase will then kick off, which we can watch the logs for, checking catalog for any unclassified columns that passed because we there we go. You have no columns pending classification on Win 2016 Voice of the DBA testing. That's then going to deploy our database release. Thank you, SQL Change Automation. Once it's done that, it will then copy the classifications up to our production environment. Now, effectively, this whole process becomes like I say, just part of the DevOps cycle. Instead of in incorporating additional red tape, we build it into our existing upstream CI and CD processes. That means that the, the developers adding the columns to that particular database need only either uh, suggest a classification that it's going that it's going to come with it which you absolutely can do build out this pipeline to start even at the dev environment or it's a really good point at which to get dbas or governance involved to effectively just f sign off fin finally check that uh, that final deployment to make sure we're not releasing anything unclassified to our final production environment if we take a look at voice of the DBA production, you'll see there is nothing unspecified on there. And if we take a look and we filter down, say by table, hopefully we should see that we have, there it is, the MySpace column. And you'll notice that the confidential and in scope tags have been copied up. Now I've used some very uh, standard kind of basic tags here, but it could be as much as you like. All of those classifications will be copied up so that effectively means that we will uh, just copy everything up, even where classifications have changed as well. We're making sure that we're including those upstream. But the point is the pipeline will error out. It will kick us out and prevent us deploying unless we have captured that absolutely necessary stage of classifying the columns. This way, 
production never has unclassified columns on it. We are always up to date and our catalog stays our single central source of truth, our one screen for everyone in the organization to understand the risk potentially associated with our data stored in our structured data databases. Now, the two PowerShell scripts that I have used for this process, for these stages, uh, you can actually find in my uh, GitHub. If you go to uh, my GitHub, I will also provide them in the comments of this video. Please do feel free to have at them. Uh, they're all yours to take, amend, play with, whatever you would prefer. Of course, if you have any additional questions on how this process works or how to include the data catalog PowerShell as part of your deployment process, just get in touch. We are always happy to help out. For now though, of course, thank you for stopping by and we'll see you again soon.